To call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people. Oh, and the nice guys on business. Need an education on how to grow your business? The nice guys are here to help. Learn about great customer service, networking, and how just being nice can help you prosper. Now, here are your hosts, Doug Sandler and Strickland Bonner. All right, tell me when you're recording. I'm recording. I'm always recording. Oh. Okay, I'm okay. not really always recording, but I am recording now that you said it. he's not recording yet. Start the show, Strickland. Uh, it started. We're going. Hey, nice guy community. I'm sorry. It's it's Danielle's uh, bedtime. So welcome back. Welcome <laughs> back. Let's get to it real quick. My name is Strickland Bonner. On the other side of the microphone, Mr. Doug Sandler. And along with Mr. Doug Sandler, his wife, Danielle. She is so amazing. Can I just tell you that? Yeah, and my part of your son. Thank you. Wait a minute. I just wanted to have you come here to, so that you could talk about Trader Joe's and your beautiful, wonderful experiences with Trader Joe's. What? Why is that your responsibility? <laughs> Don't you like Trader Joe's? I do like Trader Joe's. They have the best almond butter in the world. Wow. Oh, but, I love almond butter. The salted brand, not the uh, the non-salted. You sound tired, baby. I can't imagine why. Oh my gosh. So, what time we're we recording this? It is uh, ten sixteen, and it is a pretty much an hour past uh, p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. It's uh, it's about an hour past Danielle's bedtime, so she's <laughs> she, she came she came stum- stumbling into. If you guys were just just recording at five a.m., I might be a little more chipper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Strick, before uh, we let uh, Danielle go, do you have any questions for her that might be a little bit? Um, you know, you, you might need to know. Like, I won't give you the straight answer, so you oh, want to talk to the oh, wow. the source directly. Um, Uh-oh. no, because I don't want to get into an argument about 4242 DJ Doug again. So let's just drop that. It's too late for that. <laughs> when when we were 4242 DJ Doug. See, <laughs> she I definitely don't listen to your show. <laughs> she, can you believe she does not listen to the show? I believe that, yeah. I'm glad that she doesn't well, listen to the show. I'm going to say something really rude as soon as she leaves, too. I mean, it, it's not rude. Like, Danielle, it would not rude in the sense that it would be negative to you because I love you. It would, but it's it would be kind of funny, but it may be kind of offensive. Does Kim listen to the show, Strick? Nope. No. No, never, no, never, no. <laughs> never heard it. Oh, you don't know if she listens to the I, show. No, I don't think she does. I'm quite sure she doesn't. She actually doesn't even know he's on a podcast. <laughs> Did you <laughs> for two two years? Strick- <laughs> for two years, Strickland has been going down to the basement to do something, and he's she's thinking she he's asking questions a very long time ago. Actually. Very long time ago. It- it was a couple of weeks ago we were recording and uh, I get this text from upstairs. Who are you yelling at? <laughs> and and I'm like, oh, no, I'm just recording the podcast. It's okay. Honey. <laughs> just, no, I'm just yelling at Doug. <laughs> no, you guys get so tickled. I love the, the belly laughs that come out of the, the studio, the yeah. recording studio. We do have yeah. fun. Yeah, we there was do a lot that. of yelling going on last episode Tuesday about that we recorded about forty minutes ago. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> yeah, she We're probably not supposed to tell the people like the magic behind the curtain. Yeah, see, she she doesn't mm. understand that we we actually do we we reveal ev- oh, there is no secrets here. True, we are very transparent. Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent transparency. I can't spell transparency, but I know it's a hundred percent of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what what is this episode about? It's about um, Trader Joe's food. No, yeah. well. One Trader of the things Joe's we're going to talk about it, yeah. is Trader Joe's and private labeling, and we talked about that at uh, at dinner tonight. So I was just curious, like, why is there brand loyalty to Trader Joe's? Because we don't know Trader Joe's from, like, you know, it's not like you see their commercials on TV. So why is it that we trust the Trader Joe's brand? Why do you trust Wegmans? I don't see ads for Wegmans. Yeah, I, I well, do. Wait, it's I not- definitely see Wegmans ads, but I think that it's probably no different than any other brand, right? It's that's well, the Trader Joe's brand. It's not that I tr- I don't distrust the Wegmans brand, but when I go into Wegmans, I'm seeing all the other brands. I'm seeing the brands that I'm familiar with. I'm seeing Post, and I'm seeing the, you oh, know, so we haven't purchased. Cereal. I don't know, whatever, you know. And I'm seeing Tide, and I'm seeing Orida French fries, and I'm not saying that I. <laughs> Buy the things that I see that I, the labels that are trusted out there, but I see Wegmans as this high quality store that has a lot of products. I don't necessarily know that I trust the Wegmans brand. I don't. Do we buy any Wegmans brand things? Well, how do you when feel I, about Trader Joe's? I just get lost with Trader Joe. Yeah, I do get lost in Wegmans. Trailer. And nice guy community, as you're listening to this, you may not either have Wegmans or Trader Joe's in your um, market. In your market. But let me tell you something. When I go into Trader Joe's, all they all they have at Trader Joe's, or n- I would say ninety percent of ninety, yeah, ninety percent of what they have in Trader Joe's is only Trader Joe's brand. So 
it's not that I trust the brand. I, I mean, I trust the food. I trust the brand over the food. That is interesting. I never thought about it before, but you're right. I've got a Trader Joe's near me. I really like it a lot, but I never, th- I mean, Trader Joe's definitely does not have like, you know, the General Mills and all the generic brands that you see all over everywhere. But <laughs> because the cereal again. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but you're right. I never thought about it that most of it is actually Trader Joe's brands. I think it's because they, well, they private label all their food. And then of course, they they tout organic and as much local as they can. I mean, it's just, it's a feel good brand, and uh, they yeah. don't spend their money on advertising, so they can keep your prices low. I think everything about that speaks to the consumer's needs, and that's see, why. That's- No, and that's the other thing I love is that you just sit on the head, Danielle. They keep their prices low. Like when I think of Mom's Organic Market or I think of Wegmans for that matter, I think high prices. And I don't think of that at Trader Joe's. They're not expensive. No, it's definitely a brand that is more price conscious. But I don't – does that – does does price fall into the equation for you of trusting a brand? Because if that was the case, there are places that are cheaper than – oh, you have – okay, go ahead. No, see, I think the difference is, is that Trader Joe's doesn't – like. Here, get a little closer to the microphone oh. so people can hear you. Sorry, people. Um, <laughs> nice guy community. I'm sorry. What are they called? Funky nice fans? <laughs> Funky fans. See, she listens. No, she she listens. Listen. Right, I, I might not listen to the show, but I can hear you in the entire oh, house. Oh, no. <laughs> I love you yeah. so much. <laughs> I'm also sorry, Funkin' fans, for all the love that the schmoops. The schmoops. The schmoops. So I think the difference between Trader Joe's and their low prices is not that they're touting that they're a, the, a low quality at a, at a great price. Like, okay, for example, like a Walmart to a, uh, what's the place you like? Big Lots. Target. Okay. Yeah, like Target. a Big Lots. Like I think Big Lots, I think cheap prices and I think of I think inexpensive w- products. Yeah, and I don't think of quality merchandise when I think of Big Lots or Walmart. And I would be hesitant to buy a private labeled Walmart sure. or Big Lots mm-hmm. item. But walking into Trader Joe's to buy, like I would not, uh, let me give you an example of something that I would use. I would not buy a Walmart oatmeal. I would not buy Big Lots oatmeal I would, or, or pasta sauce, but I would buy Trader Joe's pasta sauce or – or It's um, different. Trader Joe's is not touting themselves as like a, as a, a cheap brand. It's a quality brand at a low price, and the reason it's a low price is because they don't spend their money on marketing and um, and commercials and advertising. They, they keep their pricing low. At a quality for a quality product, that's what they're that's their positioning. Right, they're not saying that we're we're ser- we're selling a cheap product at a cheap price. What do you, what do you say, Strick? What's your what's oh, your- I totally agree, with Danielle. I I don't go to Trader Joe's because they're the cheapest, but I don't avoid them because they're more expensive either. In other words, if there was a Wegmans near me, look, I know you love them, Doug, but between you and me, I would not go to shop at Wegmans because my perception is that they are more expensive. And so I would specifically avoid Wegmans just for that reason. Whereas with Trader Joe's, I think of them, my perception is that they are a higher quality, but I don't avoid them because my perception is not that they're higher priced. I think what you hit on, though, was really interesting. You hit on the fact that they are higher quality. And uh, and I would I would agree with you that they are higher quality. But why is what is it about Trader Joe's that is giving us the perception that they are a higher quality other than it is. okay? Why? How do we know it is when we say higher quality as opposed to what you think they're like? For example, taking Big Lots oatmeal and packaging it in. No, I don't. I don't. Sorry I don't know Big that Lots people. People of Big Lots. Sorry. No, that's all right. Everybody kind. Of, everybody knows that this is a healthy debate here. And what's interesting about it is that, uh, like their oatmeal, I love their oatmeal, and I do happen to think it is a. It's a. It's a finer oatmeal. It's a better tasting oatmeal. It's a steel cut oatmeal, so it means it's health. <laughs> it's healthier for you. I. You know. I, I. I'm. I. You know. I enjoy my oatmeal. He does enjoy the oatmeal. Doug, do, you and, know, do you know? I don't want to get off on a tangent here, but. What the hell does steel cut mean anyway? I saw that. I was in Vegas and I saw every, I, steel cut oatmeal as opposed to fucking aluminum cut as opposed wow. to non-cut. No, what I think does it's, that mean? I think it's how they process it. I think it is a – I don't want – I don't it, profess to – go ahead. You know. It maintains more of the nutrients in the oat by the way that it's cut. It's not a it's not a okay. processed mashed ground oatmeal like um, Quaker Oats instant oatmeal. It actually is a it's a better it's a better style of oatmeal cut or it's a better cut of oatmeal and it actually is better for your body. Better cut okay, of oat. that better totally cut of makes thing. sense. Thank you for explaining. That totally makes sense. So I have a question. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to get into the perception thing because I had some thoughts on that. So don't forget your question. Hold on to it for one second. But 
you know, the brand, it's, it's all decided by whatever we decide, right? Yeah, so, right, for example, exactly. you look at Walmart versus Target, right? I hate Walmart, right? It, it's, ugh, it's like everything's so, it's, it's bright and dirty and nasty and everything's too close together yeah. and nobody's helpful. Target has the same stuff, the same prices, yeah. but my perception is right, the aisles are wider, the people are nicer. And one other one that goes even deeper than that, Doug, when you think of a Buick, or a Cadillac. What do right. you think of? Would you ever? Could you ever imagine yourself owning a Buick? <laughs> no, old man. What if on. Buick? Right. Exactly. What if Buick came out with the coolest, fanciest, hottest car out there? It's still a fucking Buick because <laughs> our right. perception, mine too. I would never imagine owning a Buick because my perception is it's an old man's car and a Cadillac. Man, you know Cadillac has come out with some cool looking cars and really well reviewed cars the last ten years. I would never ever own a Cadillac because our perception and both of those companies have been trying for years. I mean, Buick has Tiger Woods as a sponsor, right? They had Matthew McConaughey, I no. think. Oh, no, I guess that's, that's <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln Mercury, right? But Lincoln Mercury is the same thing, right? Like Lincoln, I wouldn't own a Lincoln, right? But like Matthew McConaughey is a pretty kind of cool guy, right? It takes so long to turn that it's ship long, because yeah. it's our perception. Well, perception's reality. So you take and Strickland. There is your message. Perception is reality. Strick's been working very hard on coming up with a, a platform to bring his keynote, and perception is reality is all of what he's about. Well, I think it's true. Like you could probably, and I know Doug feels passionate about this, but why a Harley versus a Yamaha versus a what a Kawasaki, whatever? Like, are who? How do we know the parts aren't the same until you like get down to the nitty gritty? You really don't. You don't. So you, you just trust and I, and I by a brand. You, tr- you, you trust the Why brand. Why is my Apple you- computer probably made <laughs> out of the exact same parts as a Microsoft or something else? And Intel inside, baby. Right. Totally different Intel. Mm-hmm. Um, but perception leads us to believe that it's a better quality phone or a better quality computer or better quality processor. But is it really? Like right. it's up to the it's up to the user, right? It's up to the the buyer. It's so true. So, so true. So, anyway, know. Th- so that's why, Doug, that's your answer to why we think Trader Joe's is that that's why our perception of Trader Joe's that we would buy Trader Joe's steel cut oatmeal before we buy Walmart steel cut oatmeal because of that perception. They've built okay. that perception. Tomato, tomato. Not all tomatoes are created equal, are they? No, no. I want the – well, we had the whole conversation about tomatoes with the heir, heir, heirloom. Heirloom. <laughs> heirloom <laughs> tomatoes, yes. right. Exactly. With heirloom tomatoes. And, <laughs> and yeah, Strick, would you pay – you know what's normal to pay for a pound of tomatoes? Two ninety nine a pound is, I think, is probably a, oh a premium price on a on a good regular tomato in in this area. But if you go to the heirloom tomatoes, you can pay as much as four ninety nine or five ninety nine a pound for tomatoes, and and, and you like, gladly do it for a delicious tomato. It sandwich. is true. I would do it too. It's the whole quality of the tomato. And Strick is like, no fucking way am I going to pay that much for a tomato? Right. To each his own. It's all good. Right. Right. Awesome. All right, hey Strick, talk for a second. I'm gonna go put uh, Danielle and Tucker. <laughs> t- Tucker and ben, put yeah, her, I'm gonna tell the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tell the. Down. I'm gonna put tell the down. joke right now that I'm gonna tell that you're not allowed to listen to. And Doug, you'll have to hear it tomorrow, or wet Thursday when the podcast airs. All right, you, you can't oh, yeah. listen to it right now. Okay, all right. I'm gonna put you on hold. You go ahead and talk to no, a nice no, guy. I want to hear the joke. Oh, it's Jeez. really it's really offensive. You're not gonna like it. <laughs> so how come the Funkin' fans are gonna like it? Well, you'll have to listen to the show on Thursday oh, if you want to like actually that. hear it. This is good, Strick. This is good. Don't Wait tell to- me all about it later. It's fine. <laughs> I won't know. To, I won't know until I hear it tomorrow. Great. Tomorrow's perfect. Well, I'm actually, to today, <laughs> all the nice guy community is listening. All good right, night, Strick. everybody. Good night, nice guy community. Yeah, that's night, it. Night, Danielle. Good. Drop now. Is this yeah, do the mic drop. Do it. I'm not because it's a very expensive mic. <laughs> okay. Good night, Strickland. Good night, Danielle. Right. Be, right, be right back, Strick. Tell, tell the tell the joke. Okay. Yeah, so when Doug told me that Danielle was going to be on the uh, podcast today and we start recording, I, I thought to myself, uh, I'm going to hear Doug's voice and I'm going to be like, hey, Doug, where's Danielle? And Doug's going to say, she can't come to the mic right now. She's got my dick in her mouth. Sorry, she's kind of busy. Anyway, for any of you Funkin' fans who are offended by that, you know, we probably should put a disclaimer before I did the joke, but 
too late. So um, my apologies to anyone who was offended by that. I have always loved that joke. It's actually from a, uh, uh, what is the movie? Rotten People, Terrible People or something? I don't know. It was all as Danny DeVito who says he had a secretary who was never answering the phone. And finally the phone rings and he picks up the phone and somebody asks actually for the secretary instead of him, who he's the boss. They're supposed to be calling for the boss. And he basically says, hey, no, I'm sorry. She can't come to the right now because she's got my dick in her mouth. Anyway, that was my joke for the day. So um, we're going to get into, in just a minute, when Doug gets back, my experience with I'm Southwest. Back. I'm back. That was like perfect, perfect what? timing because really? I was just finishing up telling the joke. <laughs> was it any good? I did not, did not I hear I think it's but... funny, but it may offend a few people. So I guess we're going to find <laughs> oh, out. Hey, oh, no. hey, Funkin' fans, if you were offended by that last joke, don't call 4242-DJ Doug because um, oh. it, it won't work. All right. Instead, hey, wait, what you need to do is you need to wait until Wednesday at 530. Don't call right now. Wait till Wednesday at 530 and call 410-340-6861. Coming back. And talk to Doug Sip personally okay. and tell him that you were offended by that joke. Or tell him okay. that you found it really funny. All right. I, I am back. And this is – these have actually been – I've really enjoyed – you know, I was I was on a downslide there for the last couple of days because you were away. I don't like when you go away because things aren't the same. <laughs> like, Every time always be- you go away, <laughs> you take a piece of me. I'm sorry, I'm going back to the 80s. Hey, wait, who's that? That's uh, uh, every time you, every John time you go Paul Young. Paul one, Young. One, one hit wonder. No, uh, yeah. John Waits uh, was missing you. I'm missing you. <laughs> yeah, oh you know, John Waits, you know, missing you, that fucking horrible ballad that he had. I hated uh-huh. that song, but he was the front man for the babies before he went he solo. Was? The babies had some great songs. I Jeez. love the babies. Did not realize that he was the front man for the babies. Yeah. Why did he go solo? You know, uh, why is I, it the that, babies never I, made it that big. They're kind of big in England. They never really made it that big here, but I man, great songs they had great songs why is it that it, when a band is together and doing really well the front man or maybe the lead guitar player and maybe even the fucking drummer for that matter they feel like they are better than the bigger than the band itself and then they go out on the solo career and they most of the time they go nowhere no it's true Sometimes they go like, okay, can you give me, I, I know you can, and I can't think of any offhand, and I'm sure you will, I, I hope I'm not putting you on the spot here to, by asking you this question, but can you name a guy that's left the band that did better than the band? Oh, sure. Uh, Phil Collins went solo from Genesis. Sting okay. has done really Agreed. well without the police. Agreed. Agreed. Um, let's see. Would you, put, would you put Michael McDonald in that category or you think the Doobie Brothers are, are bigger than the uh, bigger than Michael McDonald? No, Michael McDonald's definitely done well, but you know, he's such a funny guy because he was doing a lot of kind of soloist stuff before. It's not like the Doobie Brothers really made him big. He was a huge studio guy. Yeah, he did big a couple of solo guy. things before uh, the Doobie Brothers ever hired him and then afterward, yeah, I know, it's, that's a All right, so how about, about, how about like, what would you say like uh, um, uh, uh, Steely Dan and uh, and Donald Fagan. Who yeah, would you no, no, that's a bad bigger? one because Do- Steely Dan definitely has done better than Donald Fagan yeah, solo. Yeah, but like I, I Lou agree. Graham had a couple of hits solo when he left Foreigner. Steve Perry had a couple of hits solo when he left Journey. Um, you know, I mean, they're definitely guys that have done it and done a really good job. <laughs> Huey Lewis, he, Huey Lewis, the, the the news is still waiting for him to leave. <laughs> true, Gloria <laughs> Stefan. Well, she left Miami Sound Miami Machine. Sound she did great Machine, on her own. Great. Yeah, yeah. No, there are lots of lots of ones that go solo and and do really well, but others don't. It just you know shit happens. It goes sometimes yeah. it goes sometimes it doesn't. So I don't even remember how we got off on that uh, on that tangent, but uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people that will that will come back and say, well, how about such and such? They left the band and did much better. So if you do have any of that information, please uh, please let us know. You know, Stacy Sherman will have some good ones. <laughs> I'm sure. Hey, did we do the uh, did we do the announcement about the phone number? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, let's do it right now. Okay, so Wednesdays, everybody, Wednesdays, Wednesdays, we'll be brief. Wednesdays is a Dialing for Doug Day. If you have not yet tuned in on a Wednesday, a Dialing for Doug Day, all you need to do is dial 410-340-6861. My phone lines will be open for an hour and a half. No, it won't be on the air. Yes, it will be. Yes, just you and me. We can talk about anything. We can talk about famous front men that leave bands. Peter become- Cetera, just you and me. <laughs> Ah, wow. Simple and free. Lead singer Farner, who was it? Lou Graham. (laughs) Okay. So Pete Pete Cetera was the lead singer for Chicago, and he actually probably did better after he left Chicago than. God, but Chicago is so big. 
They were huge, but Beach Terra after well, they were really big in the in the seventies and eighties and then kind of died and Pizza Terra did really well after that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, anyway, nice guy community. Wednesdays is dialing for Doug Day between 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that's uh, G- Greenwich. Is it Greenwich Mean Time GMT? Greenwich, Greenwich Mean Time. The, Greenwich, the W Gren- is silent. Yeah. Gre- Greenwich. It's like sandwich. <laughs> exactly. It's just like sandwich. <laughs> okay. Between 5 and 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 410-340-6861 is the number. It's the uh, uh, one country code, the United States country code. Please dial me. I want to talk to you. We can talk about anything, business, personal, doesn't matter. You need business advice. You want to give me business advice. <laughs> any any way to go, I would be happy to to, uh, to chat with you. Uh, you can bend my ear. Uh, I'm giving an hour and a half of time. If more people call, uh, your, your, your timing will be less. But uh, but call in. We can shoot the shit for a, a little bit. Okay? All right. Okay, good. then. Good there. All right. So, uh, uh, let's see. What did we talk about today? We didn't argue like we did on uh, on um, Tuesday's show, right? Not we yet. Have, uh, all right. We had Danielle was a big plus on the show today. We talked about uh, talk about Trader Joe's. That's good. Not, what do you mean not yet? By the way, it could happen still. We said that time. Are you going to you're going to pick a fight? Yeah, I want to hear about um, I want to not- hear about Southwest. What happened? Oh, okay. So Southwest. Let's talk about Southwest. We talked about Southwest Air a lot. And of course, I love Southwest. And I had an interesting situation with them. Um, back mm-hmm. in July, I canceled mm-hmm. a flight. Okay. And I had a flight credit, right? Yep. I tried to use it for this September Vegas trip. Okay. And they said, Hey, I'm sorry. We don't have that flight credit. Um, you know, it, it looks like you were a no show. And we talked about this on an episode, geez, two or three months ago, I think. Um, and so they, they emailed me and they basically said, Hey, we don't have this credit because you actually were a no show. You didn't cancel the flight. You just didn't show up. And in that particular case, I'm sorry you lose it. But. The interesting email that they sent me after that was, hey, but by the way, sometimes we know there are extenuating circumstances, stuff happens, and you know what? If this was one of those cases and you had something really weird and extreme happen, just drop us an email, tell us the the circumstances, and we'll let you know maybe we can work something out. And I thought, hey, that's really cool. That's really nice of them, right? Now, in this particular case, they emailed me a confirmation that said, your reservation has been canceled. I actually had the email confirmation. So it wasn't that I was a no-show. They just messed it up in their system. I'm like, okay, cool. So I email them back and I say, hey, here's my, uh, here's the reference number. Here's the original email you sent me to cancel. So it's all good. Please just give me my credit back. Well, I didn't hear from them for a while, you know, and so I bugged them again. The other day I get an email back and it says, uh, the documentation you submitted does not meet our criteria for an exception, and Ooh. we are unable to honor your request for a refund. Not we happy. apologize for any disappointment. <laughs> not the answer I was looking for, that my documentation, which is actually the email they sent me <laughs> saying that I actually did cancel, which right. I have no idea how that would not meet the criteria for the exception to the I fact think what they're saying is they've reviewed it and they were wrong about what their response was, which is totally even more wrong because they gave you the response that said that you're entitled to the, uh, the refund. Well, you know, and so I did call them today and I basically said that – um, hey, you made a mistake. I got this email back. I wanted to talk to somebody personally. I didn't want to just email back and forth because I've been doing that. And obviously, right. the communication right. has not been great because I sent this email. Girl was very nice, very friendly. And she said, do me a favor, send me, forward me a copy of the email. She gave me her email address, said, please put attention to her. And she said she would get back to me tomorrow. So I'll keep you updated and let you know. Oh, wait a minute. We don't have an end to this story? Well, not yet. Not yet. Wow. We, we may. I'm sure we will next week. I'm hoping by next week we will. But, um, you know, it really could change my opinion of Southwest. I mean, All right, so, so what's so this interesting, really- though, is the way we go. We've talked about this before, I think. When you had an issue with uh, Walmart, right? Was yep. it Walmart? No, K- Kmart. Kmart. Kmart, right. right. And um, immediately, your first attitude was, dude, I'm not going to get this back. I'm pissed, right? right because right, right. your perception of Walmart or Kmart right up Is front. They're, they're not going to straighten this out. It's just not how they're going to. And your perception was the exact opposite, that they are going to figure a way to figure to straighten this out. Exactly. And they're not, coming, they're not coming through. Because of their reputation and because of my perception of Southwest, I am giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm presuming that they are going to make this right because they are Southwest. Now, 
they could change my mind and change my so, perception of them. So this begs the question, at least the at least the the it's out there, this feeling that I have that what happens if what happens if a brand that we trust and we know and we love so much and is so, such a central part of what we think is uh, exemplary customer service, what happens when a brand like that lets you down? Like, you know like, what's interesting? Let me give you a, a hypothetical situation. Okay. okay? Yeah. Go. This is one that I've always wondered about. Let's say, give me somebody who is like, uh, that you would be honored to be in the room with, like a mentor, somebody that you'd be like, oh my God, that you totally look up to, anybody okay. in the world. All right. So, uh, living or dead? Yeah, sure. Why okay. not? A guy like uh, Zig Ziglar. Zig Brian, Ziglar. Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins. Okay, so let's say Tony Robbins is still around, right? Let's say you meet Tony Robbins. You meet mm-hmm. him backstage, right? Yeah. And, yep. and you're like, oh my God, I am so honored. And he's like, Oh, dude, Doug, hey, come on, let's, let's sit and shoot the shit, right? And he sits and he talks to you for like 15 or 20 minutes and you guys feel like you click, right? Like yep, you hit yep, it and like yep. he really cares about you and you're like, fucking A, man. I just, I really, I thought so much of Tony Robbins before, but now I feel, I think so much more of yeah, him. And yeah. you're shaking his hand and he's leaving. And as he's turning and leaving, you see him turn to like one of his bodyguards and go, what an asshole. <laughs> oh God! Yes, Think about yeah. That. I just you just took me along that ride, and then you just dumped that piece of shit on right. me, and I'm like, holy fuck! How could you unring that? Yeah, bell? you, you can't. can never you can't. repair that ever. Right. right. Think right. about that, and and I, that is what we sometimes do to our customers, or what companies sometimes do to us when right. under their breath they go. What an asshole. Because they, they can't get your your loyalty back after that. It's gone. No, I, I, hundred, I 100% get it. And so the question again remains, what happens if a brand that you know, love, and trust uh, disappoints you? How can they make it up to you or what will it take for them to it, – it's not like the fact that they won't issue the refund or a flight credit. Look, there's a whole different um, value to a company like Southwest – giving you a refund versus offering you a flight credit. A flight credit pretty much costs them nothing, correct? No, it's not It's not exactly true because it does cost them – there is the opportunity cost, right? If they flew planes with empty seats all the time, I agree with you. Like a hotel room, right? If you've got a hotel that is not 100% booked most of the time, giving away a hotel room – costs next to nothing really the cost of it is uh you know whatever housekeeping is yeah right an airplane is a little different because they're almost always going to sell every single seat so them giving me a credit means that they don't have the opportunity to sell that seat to somebody else but i totally see what you're saying i I don't necessarily i i i agree with you that they are they're almost at capacity but i have flown more times than not that there have been a few a few empty seats on the plane i'm thinking that they don't fly Every, it's not like it. What are the chances of you picking a flight that you were the last seat they're going to they're going to select, or what is the chance of you picking a seat that will create the full flight that then somebody says I'm going to fly another airline, or they might say I'm just going to fly at a different time. Like I don't go from picking an air a flight at 5 p.m. and not having access to that flight because it's sold out or it says unavailable, and then me saying, oh, well, let me go on another airline. I would sooner look for another time that that same airline flies. I'm with you. I'm with you. So I I, I think that there there is a – there is an opportunity for them to make this up to you, not by giving you money back. I don't even know if you're lo- you're not looking for money back, right? You're I'm just looking, looking for, for a flight credit back. Flight right. I'm credit. not looking for cash. I just want to be able to use this money on another flight down the road somewhere. I think that there that once you get to a point, and again, I don't run a, a big company's customer service department, so I know that they probably have people asking them all the time for shit like this, and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't give away one more seat. You know, we're at we're at our quota of free seats that we're able to give away. Mm-hmm. But I think that they got to they got to take into account a few things. One, they got to take into account the history of how many times you've flown them. How many times have you flown Southwest, Rick? Oh my gosh, I, it is just you can't about, count anymore, right? Right, it's just about the only airline that I have flown for the last twenty years, and I do at least meh, two to five flights a year. I mean, I'm not Sean Carpenter, right? But I mean, I fly at least a couple times a year, and it's all un- unless it's someplace Southwest doesn't go. 
I'm going to fly Southwest. Okay. So they have to take, now maybe they don't look at it that way, but I certainly would if I was a company. And I'm not saying that Southwest is doing a bad job with customer service. I think they do an exemplary job with customer service and they probably do get it right more times than they get it wrong. In this particular case, I think they've taken it too far with you. I think you're right. So we're going to find out. Yeah, find it's really interesting. Stay tuned, and we will let you know what the uh, final answer is. There is one more topic I want to get into before we wrap up that you sent me already. Um, okay, do you want to pick, or you want me? How much? What time? How far into the episode We're are we? Twenty nine right minutes in, but Domino's Pizza is now Wings Two. Yeah, okay. I'm very curious about that because let me tell you why. There are two reasons. First of okay. all, Domino's has been selling wings on and off for at least five years now uh, yeah they probably yeah at least this is but not you know new news no no i i'm not wasn't there to share new news with you oh, okay. i what i was there to share was a, a domino's pizza experience that i think was was really good oh cool I, okay. I really, I th- well you sent me the the topic said domino's pizza is now wings too and i'm thinking to myself like this yeah, oh, is I your topic you. like it's so special that they have wings now i mean they've had wings for a really goddamn long time what i think is really cool about domino's have you seen their ads which you probably haven't because you know you don't no. have tv their salad ads no okay you get into the story in a minute i'm gonna give you a quick version of the, their new ads they're saying that they sell salad right okay now, if you're thinking oh yeah we've got a, a, a <laughs> pizza place that sells salad right so what what is their uh, what is their advertising pitch going to be? Oh, yeah, well, you can eat healthy with us now, healthy, too, right? Right, right. right. <laughs> their whole advertising pitch is, hey, don't let that salad eater ruin pizza night for you. <laughs> it's like, true. basically, they got a family saying, ooh, pizza, pizza. And, and somebody go, I want salad. And everybody gives them a glare, like, what the hell are you talking about? So Domino's, I love this. Domino's is basically pitching it like, hey, we don't like salad either, but we know you got to keep people happy sometimes. So fuck it. We're going to sell it too. We're going to sell salad because we've given up and we don't like the salad eater either. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that approach. Anyway. Yeah. So, so, um, I had my, <laughs> I guess I'm going to interject a second topic into the, into the one topic of Domino's pizza now sells wings. Um, I was, uh, I've had my dog over the last five days at my house. My, uh, my ex who I'm actually good friends with. Her name is Fern. Uh, my ex um, has our dog. Mm. And um, over the last, uh, let's see, um, I got remarried. Good. Uh, let me just think about it. <laughs> let me think about the, the, how much time. I haven't lived in my house for, in, in the house that I lived with my ex for um, five or six years. I can't remember how much time. Anyway, we've had this dog. And over the last five or six years, Snickers, who is the dog, Snickers is uh, eight years old or nine maybe at this point. Snick has never had to go to a kennel in his entire life, which is kind of cool. You know, you've had a dog and, you know, you like to keep the dog. And we, we don't even have a fence in that backyard. So we, as a couple, we had many times that we had taken turns. And with our kids, we had walked the dog. So I'm making a long story even longer here. But that dog has never had to go to a kennel. So she goes out of town. My kids are going out of town. My mom is going out of town. So nobody can take the dog. I live an hour away. And I said, okay, well, the dog is a little uneasy when the dog gets out of his own element. Sure, because we've babied the dog for the last eight or nine years, right? Just a little bit. Snick likes his chicken with a little bit of salt and pepper. (laughs) Okay, so... (laughs) Anyway, so the dog is over at my house. So now I'm holed up in my house because I can't – I guess I could have left the dog in the house. I just didn't want to. Okay, call me a wimp. Call me a whatever. I don't care. Or call me a a dog lover. I just didn't want to leave the dog in in my house by himself because I didn't want the dog to be alone. He he does not know the house. He doesn't know anything other than his house and my mom's house. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) I'm here at the house for five days. (laughs) <laughs> and I've run out of food because <laughs> my wife is doing – Danielle is doing an event and she's been – she was uh, down in D.C. And for three of those five days, it was just me and the dog. So I could not – I couldn't really – I mean I took the dog out for a walk. I know this really sounds horrible. <laughs> I, I took many, many walks. I've actually discovered a lot of really nice uh, par- places to walk. So there is a benefit of having your dog and to be, um, to be kind of a shut-in <laughs> for a few days. <laughs> Anyway, so I ran out of food at a certain point and I didn't want to put the dog in the car because I didn't want to make the dog any more nervous than the dog already was for being in my house. So I ordered in Domino's. Boy, that was the longest way to get to the Domino's thing. Uh, and I have ordered Domino's. 
I ha- haven't ordered Domino's for many, many years. I do not recall the last time I ordered Domino's. Maybe it's been a while. Maybe it hasn't been that long, but I can't recall. So I get on the website, and I'm like, they have this whole like pizza tracker. Have you seen Pizza Tracker? Yes. Oh, this is this is not news to anybody, I guess, right? No, it like tells you. It's not news you to where anybody. It, it's not news to anybody who has television <laughs> or internet. No, but go ahead, Doug. Please, we're entertained. Cool, cool story, bro. Tell it again. Go ahead. <laughs> I order pizza. They basically tell you where it is in the in the entire process. It's in baking. It's in Manuel as your order. He's flipping your pizza dough. <laughs> so, I've never so, actually used the tracker, but does it oh, say stuff like that? Hey, Manuel yeah. is tossing your dough I don't right know now. If it's got the name of the guy, but yeah, there's like a whole bunch of fun stuff. And then it it, it just it basically follows. It. I think it's like six, five or six or seven steps through the through the process. And I can remember being in college and ordering Domino's, and the deal with Domino's, it's 30 minutes or it's free, right? That was how it was. Now, I don't think they do that anymore. I don't know that they do that anymore. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so I order the pizza, and it says it'll be at your house in like 25 or 30 minutes or whatever. So I'm watching the process, and I'm I'm getting excited about my pizza like going to be arriving. But as I was placing the order, I'm like, holy shit, Domino's has got a lot of stuff. They have they have like a, a – what the hell is it? They have – uh, volcano cake. What's oh, it sure, like? Yeah. Lava cake. They have, they have the the wings were amazing. I got these boneless wings. God damn it, people! They're really good. Mm-hmm. I would encourage you if you have not gotten on. I have a Domino's pizza recently. Is is Papa John's any good? I have not had that. Now I'm like excited about going back to when we used to order frozen. Uh, not frozen. When we used to order pizza for delivery from Domino's back in college. It was 1982. Yep. I, honestly. Their pizza wasn't that good. I always thought it was pretty good. I think it's gotten better. I love Papa John's. I just really like their, I like the crust, I like their sauce. I mean, I like Domino's. I'm not going to say I don't like them. I just like Papa John's better. Um, but it's all in, you know, matter of taste. Like, I'm not a huge fan of Pizza Hut pizza anymore. I used to like them a lot. No, more. I don't like Pizza Hut. Yeah. Yeah. No, but but I really enjoyed the entire process. You know, it was really easy. It was not it literally for the two things that I ordered, which were pizza and wings. I had um, I had three meals out of it, so it was like twenty five bucks for three meals worth of stuff. I thought it was good. I enjoyed okay. it. Well, uh, Funkin' fans, nice guy community, ladies and gentlemen, you can go up on eBay. <laughs> welcome and back, you can, welcome, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back. You can go up on eBay now and you can find Doug's uh, pager and flip phone on eBay <laughs> right now as he comes into the 21st century with the rest of us. Hey, listen, nice guy community, if you know anything about me, you know I am being, I am laying it all out there. And Strick, you do the same thing. I, I mean, I, I could not... I am I am as unassuming a guy. I mean, I do like some of my technology, and I do in you know, like my Mac computers and all that other shit. And I do like you know my machines. I enjoy my nineteen. I'm a two thousand and eleven, whatever Toyota Highlander that's got one hundred and forty, one hundred thirty thousand miles on it. I don't want to have to get a new car. I love my Harley. It's very good. I, you know, there's just certain things that in your life you just kind of. You know, you get used to. I got used to never ordering, like, order in pizza. And so for me, this was a, like a brand new experience all over again. Okay. Well, I'm so glad you can enjoy that again, Doug. <laughs> so why don't you just get on your Southwest flight and get the fuck out of here? Hey, Southwest, I'm going to be joining you in <laughs> Seattle. We haven't worked the details out yet. What are the day you're going to be in Seattle? We're going to start planning this if we're going to do coffee talk. You know, that's right. I, I guess uh, Julia Miller, uh, who is a Funkin' fan, you better you better contact me if you want me to come to Seattle there's got to be some level of urgency. I'm not going to beg to come out there Hang on my neck. We, we have one specific Funkin' fan that wants to see us out there. I thought we were going out there because you're speaking. And I am speaking. Along. No, no, that is exactly right. I'm speaking for the National Association of Catering and Events, and uh, and I was um, asked to come to their event in January. But um, Now, are you doing like a, a just a Seattle chapter that's going to be 50 or 100 people, or is this more of a a national or a regional? No, it's not their. It's not their national conference. Their national conference asked asked me to come, but it was ridiculous. They wanted first of all, they wanted me to pay my own way. They wanted me to pay for the conference, and they wanted me to pay for the fucking hotel. I mean, hang on, what, are what you kidding right? me? What benefit is that? They not only were they not gonna pay you, yeah, they were not even that. gonna comp the conference. No, 
No, I mean, they were paying. They were paying for the one day for me to be at the conference. But if I wanted to go to the the other days of the conference, they wanted me to pay. Oh, but oh, wait a minute. Wait, oh, so hold on. Wait a minute. Let's just clarify. So if okay. you if you had not had interest in actually attending the conference, they were paying you to speak. No. Oh, okay. I thought you said they were paying you for the one day to be there. No, they weren't going to pay for me. Well, wait a minute. What's worse, Rick? They're not going to pay me to be there. They want me to pay my travel, my hotel, and they want me to pay for the conference. Oh, but hey, while you're there, would you speak too? No, no, no. What? That doesn't I'm, make any No, no, I'm totally with you. But I, I, it sounded like what you were saying at the end was, oh, yeah, they were going to pay me to speak, but they wouldn't offer to no. pay for the conference. They weren't offered no. to pay for anything. Nothing. That's Nothing, ridiculous. and so from a national uh, on a national level, I'm like, I'm not doing that. Why would I do that? Can you tell me? Can, uh, God, you know what kills me? Huh. Maybe Danielle can explain this. Go wake her up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know those conferences, right? Let's say the next conference, right? Was it three days, four days, maybe, right? Right, right. And what is actually included? Like, there's no meals included, right? It's just the. Oh, no, they include meals. They have meals included. They have like breakfast, lunches, and dinners. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what, it, what the extent. The ones that I had gone to, if I remember correctly, they have a they have an opening ceremony. They have, so they have a couple of dinners. They have a couple of lunches. Um, I, I think they you, might like, you include, had to pay extra for those, but you don't. Know they're included. I, uh, you know, I, I I can't recall. I don't want to. I don't want to. The only thing I can speak properly about is what their offer was to me and it was an offer that wasn't even an offer it's like why not and i'm not going to mention any names because they are an an active potential client for me right now Mm -hmm. but i'm dealing right now with a conference that I, i guess they just don't get it or maybe they have enough people that are willing to say i will participate at this level but there was a conference they not only wanted me to pay for uh for all my own travel but they wanted me to pay for the admission to the conference as well. And then there was like a speaker's premium that they wanted me to pay as well. I'm like, are, are you-, you kidding me? So they were asking you to pay to speak. Right, like I was an advertiser and I'm not doing that. No, that's some bullshit. That's and, ridiculous. And, and for a guy, again, I know that I am not the, the $25,000 speaker that is, in, that is in high demand as of yet. But I can tell you that I will – I will never speak at a conference that says something like that, that does not value the services that I provide. You know how much money, time, effort, energy I've put into building the speaking career? There is no fucking way that anybody is going to take advantage of it. And and they look at it and they just say, we're doing you a favor by letting you speak at our conference. Look at the exposure that you're going to get by being in front of these 3,500 people or these 2,500 people. I'm like, are you fucking nuts? Yeah, so you know what kills me though? Like what I was getting at before was – what do they charge for that conference? It's not cheap for three or four I think, days. I think that the one in particular, not the NACE conference, because I, I, I think that that is not a huge, huge expense. I think it's about $1,000 or 1500 bucks. But this other conference that I'm talking about, $3,500. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, but even the NACE one, I mean, even at $1,500 bucks for four days, right? Yeah. doesn't include yeah. hotels. So let's say it does include meals, right? So... At four days, and really a four-day conference is usually first day is a half day in the evening, last day is a half day in the morning. So really, you're looking at three days. So you're looking at $500 a day, right? They're okay. going to give you fucking croissants and, and cold uh, 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 scrambled eggs You're saying that, you're saying for that they're, they're ma- I, and for some reason, they will tell you, I'm telling you, Strick, they will tell you that they are not making any money from this. From I know. This so we're, So they don't pay their speakers, right? And a lot of times when they do like the big dinners, right? Like yeah. a lot of times they'll have caterers yeah, that will yeah. volunteer their time because the caterer wants to get their name out there. Where the fuck does the money go? I don't know, but I would be more than happy to have anybody that is uh, that is a part of the organization come on the show, defend the show. Believe me, tell me why it is a value to to a guy like me or a speaker like me. Where is it that you can that somebody has the nerve to be able to say? You can speak at our conference, but you're going to pay for everything. Oh, we'll give you the one day as a as a part of it. It, it was it was it 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 was insulting to me, and so not only not only did I did I not want to be a part of that uh, of that um, uh, of that national conference anymore, but it turned my stomach about the entire association because oh, then right. I started look. Yeah, you you know what I mean. I just. 
you know, and, and I'm sorry if, if there, we have people in the community that are a part of the organization. I, sp- I built my entire career in the beginning based upon uh, the relationships that I've made in there. And I really, I really felt let down by the organization. I felt like I have participated in so many things through the years. It, it kind of got me a little, it, it did. It got me upset about it. And, um, and maybe this is my, maybe this is my sounding ground. You know, what, what do you call it? My sounding board? Yeah, your sounding board, right. Yeah, this is my soapbox. If there's somebody that's out there that is a part of the organization that would like to defend it, I, I'm happy to hear it. And we can have you're, a... You're not naming the organization so they can't defend themselves because you're trying to be did. polite and not name them. Well, I've I have named the association that the one that I'm talking about. Oh, the nice. other associate, yeah, yeah, the other oh, association okay, yeah. I'm not going to name because I I'm because I'm so new with this particular organization that I I want to really dig around a little bit. I'm thinking that it can't possibly be this way. There's got to be another way. I, I I can't imagine an organization not only charging you but charging you a speaker premium in order to be a part of the. Um, that is not Nace. Nace is not doing that. So I'm not I'm not downing Nace for that. I I, I what I am mad about. Or upset about is the fact that, you know, they um, they're not covering anything. It just does not make sense. And there are paid people that are there, and it, I don't know, I don't know. Just it makes me sour grapes. Sour grapes. That's me. No, that's you know, and that does kind of even make it worse when there are paid people. Now I understand that different speakers are going to get paid different amounts of money because they're different draws. Okay, I understand that. But to basically say, look, you know what, we're going to need you to pay us a premium <laughs> so we can afford to pay this guy more money. That's fucking ridiculous. Stupid. Yeah. I don't, I don't like it. I don't All like right, it. We're like time. way long. Yeah. I guess if we're only doing two episodes of us each week, we could run a little bit longer now, but I think we've been ranting long enough today. Don't you? Okay. Let's see. So to review this week, we've had an argument. We've talked about Trader Joe's. We talked about Domino's pizza, craft beer, <laughs> Snick Southwest. At my house. Southwest Snickers at my house, Snickers at your house. My wife, Danielle, and um, some other good stuff, I'm and sure. not calling 4242 DJ Doug. Instead, calling, I'm sorry, what number 410-430-6861. But only on Wednesday between 5 o'clock and 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. That would be 4 o'clock Central, 3 o'clock Mountain, 2 o'clock Pacific Time, <laughs> or around midnight to 1 a.m. in the U.K. You can uh, you can call anytime you want, but the times that I'm setting aside specifically for the Nice Guy community is Wednesdays between five and six thirty p.m. And I will do my best if if I'm on the phone to try to uh, get off the phone and take the phone call. But if I'm not on the phone, I do want to talk to you, please, <laughs> please, please don't make me beg. <sighs> Who we got tomorrow, Doug? Uh, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow we got uh, Renee Brent. Oh, Renee Brent, the hypnotherapist. Oh, excellent. You're going to enjoy tomorrow's show. Renee Brent, definitely check this out. She's going to talk about the scripts that are going off in your brain, the six inches between your ears, and uh, you know how that works. So uh, check out Renee Brent, hypnotherapist, on uh, on tomorrow's show, the Nice Guys on Business podcast. Nice Guy community, never underestimate the power of nice. Why don't you say the final line, Strick? (sighs) Steve O'Brien, take us out of here. For the nice guys on business, I'm Steve O'Brien. Do you think they could have rambled on any longer today? Blah, buddy, blah, buddy, blah, buddy, blah.